The deadly power of Shaolin Iron Hand comes from a masterful control of the body's internal energy, which is channeled into a well-conditioned hand in such a way as to achieve tremendous penetrating force. Several martial arts disciplines around the world have a version of Iron Hand. Some involve disfigurement or loss of sensitivity in the hand. In an extreme case, the bones of the hand are crushed and the nerves deadened, making the hand a mere club. In China, such injurious extremes are rare. And in northern Shaolin Iron Hand, much emphasis is placed on a gradual conditioning of the hand mediated by medical ointments, so that even at an extreme stage of conditioning, full sensitivity and flexibility of the hand is maintained. You may be disappointed to learn that Shaolin Iron Hand training does not involve stabbing the hands into iron filings wired to a red heat. That fiction, propagated by movies, arose from the northern practice of heating iron filings over a fire in wintertime to thaw them out to practice. Shaolin Iron Hand training appears simple, even tedious. You pound bags to toughen up your hands. But concealed beneath this monotonous surface is an internal skill that will take you years to master, the ability to channel the body's chi into the hands for strikes of a devastating penetrative power. As you watch this video, keep in mind the duality of the training, which is both external and internal. The most common mistake made by beginners is to ignore the internal side and use too much external force. This will get you nowhere and may even lead to injury. Ancient Chinese physiology viewed the body as consisting of seven layers, skin, muscle, tendon, bone, bone marrow, blood, and chi. This video will use this view in describing the three stages of hand conditioning. The first stage conditions the skin and muscles near the surface. For this, use mung beans, which can be found in oriental grocery stores or health food stores. Mung beans powder with pounding, and this powder, when absorbed into the hands, has a medicinal value. Mung beans will break down with pounding and should be replaced. The second stage conditions the tendons and bone structure of the hand. Gravel is often used, but soybeans, being lighter and softer, can be substituted for a more gradual step up from mung beans. Soybeans are larger and more irregular than mung beans, which causes a deeper penetration of the hands. Replace soybeans when they begin to break down. Gravel is the other choice for the second stage. A natural aquarium gravel is good. Don't get gravel that's been epoxy coated or painted, as this can be absorbed into the skin. The gravel should be smooth, without sharp edges, as this will cut through the bag and into the hands. Quarter inch pebbles are ideal. The gravel shown here is beginning to break down and should soon be replaced. The third stage conditions the bone marrow, the blood, and the chi. For this, use quarter-inch ball bearings of carbon steel, raw steel, or chrome steel. Avoid plating any kind of ball bearings as it will chip off and can puncture the hand. Chromium plating is particularly bad as it will powder and be absorbed through the hands, and chromium is not good for the body. Ball bearings do not typically break down. The stand should be sturdy with a flat surface. The height should allow the practitioner to stand in a relaxed horse stance and contact the bag with the arm sloping down at 45 degrees. For stage one training, center a single mung bean bag on the stand. For stage two, you can place a mung bean bag 
on top of a gravel bag as shown. This will be discussed later. Here, a stand is thrown together using cement blocks. The blocks are fitted tightly together, and for each successive layer, they face a different direction. Take the time to put together a good solid stand, as you will be using it two to three times a day for many months or years. A word about the bags. You can purchase them from Wing Lamb, or you can make them yourself. Making them requires some experimentation, as some materials will not hold up well to pounding. A thick cotton fiber is best, thick enough to resist splitting open, not so thick that you can't feel the beans or gravel through it. The surface area of the bag should be large enough for two hands, placed side by side, with fingers comfortably spread, leaving one inch around them. China has enjoyed a long and rich history of pharmacology. The Ben Kao Gong Mu, a 52-volume encyclopedia completed in 1578, contained descriptions of over 1,800 medicines and 11,000 prescriptions, a masterpiece known the world over that was quoted by Charles Darwin. Chinese pharmacology is known for its careful mixing of dozens of ingredients for a gestalt healing or preventive effect. One example of this is Deep Da Jiao, a medicine essential to proper iron hand training. Kuo Yuzhang used it, as did his master, Yan Ji Wen, as did Yan Ji Wen's master. The Di Da Jiao shown here is made by Sifu Wing Lam using the recipe handed down through his lineage. The importance of Di Da Jiao will be discussed further in the massage portion of this video. Begin each training session with warm-ups to prepare the body, and especially the arms and hands. Start with arm swings. Lock one arm tightly behind the back to help brace the body, which should not rock during the exercise. Swing the other arm as shown. The arm is straight and without tension. Let the shoulder joint rotate fully and fluidly. Again, the body should not rock. Spin the arm fast enough that you feel pressure building in the hand as blood pools there. If the shoulder is tight, start slow and gradually speed up. Spin the arm for 50 revolutions, then pivot and switch to the other arm, swinging for 50 more revolutions. Repeat this process one more time. This exercise loosens up the arm muscles and increases the energy flow into the arm and hand giving you better internal technique when pounding the bag. Do not skip the warm-ups. Your internal energy will not flow, making your technique sloppy and your hands more susceptible to injury. Stand relaxed with feet shoulder width apart. Alternately flick the hands out to the sides. Think in terms of flicking something off the tips of the fingers. Note the position and motion of the elbow. As with the arm swings, this hand flicking exercise loosens up the muscles in the wrist, hands, and elbows and increases energy flow for better internal technique. Hit the bag using a four-stroke pattern. The right hand uses the right side of the bag, the left hand the left. For each hit, raise the hand to head level and let it drop. Avoid powering it down. This is the palm strike. Back hand. Chop. 
in the poke. For the palm strike, cup the hand with fingers together, thumb against forefinger. The hand remains relaxed in this shape. Drop the hand with a slapping motion, focusing your energy into the hollow of the palm. Because the palm is a major conduit of the body's chi, a slapping palm strike has, with proper focus, tremendous penetrating force. This strike should be viewed as mostly internal. The backhand is a flicking, whip-like strike. The striking surface is from mid-hand to the ends of the fingers, with the wrist well away from the bag. Do not merely hit with the back of the hand. The hand is dropped in a relaxed manner, and the whipping motion occurs only as contact is made, such that the ends of the fingers snap against the bag. The strike is mostly external. Its hard, stinging power comes from wrist and finger joint motion alone. Chop with the side of the palm. Avoid hitting on the little finger. Bend the wrist so that the edge of the hand hits flush with the bag. Like the backhand, the chop is mostly external, a hard, abrupt chopping motion that taps little of the body's chi. Poke with the fleshy tips of the thumb and fingers, which are comfortably spread. When viewed from the side, the thumb and forefinger form a half circle. After the poke, withdraw the hand with a clawing motion. For this strike, keep your fingernails trimmed short to avoid any roughness or splintering of the nails. Like the palm strike, the poke is mostly internal because chi flows out of the fingertips and also because the major chi outlet of the palm is centered. Remember, even though the backhand and chop are mostly external, they still have an internal component which should be nurtured and maximized through practice. Keep the mouth closed and breathe in and out through the nose. Don't time your breathing to the strikes. Keep it natural. If your energy is low, start slow. Focus each hit until energy flows. As your energy increases, you may speed up, but maintain a comfortable rhythm. Pound the bag for 15 minutes and repeat three times a day if possible, otherwise twice a day. You can increase the time to half an hour if you have the time and stamina, but be consistent. Above all else, use common sense. If your hands are sore or injured, shorten the session to half or skip it altogether. You will only set yourself back by trying to rush the conditioning. Be patient, be regular, and always give yourself time to heal. The rule for stage progression is, if you can hit a bag for 15 or 20 minutes without feeling soreness, you can move to the next stage. If one is diligent in practicing three times a day, one can finish stage one in three months, stage two in another three months. Stage three is never considered complete, but a high degree of conditioning can be achieved in another three to six months. These times will vary from person to person, depending on their diligence and their physical character. At the gravel stage, always begin your session with two to three minutes on mung beans. When you progress to iron, spend two to three minutes on mung beans, two to five minutes on gravel before hitting iron. Adjust these times to your own physical condition and state of health on any given day spending even more time on the lower stages if your hands are sore or if you feel unfocused. Remember, always warm up with mung beans and gravel to some extent to gain focus and concentration. Always maintain a good solid stance. Your chi comes from the dantian, which is centered about three inches below the navel, and a good balanced stance is conducive to its flow. The stance should be solid, but not too low. Too low a stance will take focus off the hands, disrupting concentration and the flow of chi. Here, Sifu Lam demonstrates stance shifting while hitting a bag. Stance changes are done for three reasons to relieve discomfort in the legs that interfere with your focus, to learn how to maintain internal energy flow during movement, and to learn how to hit the bag from different stances as chi flows differently with each. If your legs become tired or shaky, always shift to a new stance. Experiment with shifting from one stance to another while maintaining your rhythm and focus.
In iron hand training, injury to the hands is unavoidable and is, in fact, the catalyst for conditioning. However, for the conditioning to work, the injuries must be minor and they must heal before the next session starts. To accomplish this, one must massage the hands with a medicinal liniment after each session. Without it, the hands will chap, crack, become achy, and there will be no progress. As mentioned earlier, the liniment of choice is Diet Da Jiao. Besides its penetrative healing properties, it extracts toxins, cleanses the blood, and maintains good circulation. Be aware that there are many brands of Diet Da Jiao on the market, some better than others. The Diet Da Jiao made by Sifu Wing Lam contains more than 20 ingredients in a rice wine base. Avoid brands that use isopropyl alcohol as a base, as they will dry out the hands. Also avoid oil-based liniments, as they will cause the hands to retain heat. Start by rubbing the hands as you would when washing with soap and water. Use generous amounts of Diet Da Jiao, which your hands will absorb quickly for the first couple of minutes. Replenish it often. As your hands become saturated, you can rub longer without adding more. As you proceed, rub deeper than you would than when washing your hands, moving the muscles, tendons, and bones about. After thoroughly rubbing out the hands, focus on the fingers. Starting with the little finger, rub downward from the tip toward the hand. Rub deeply into each joint, always pushing toward the heart. Rub each finger thoroughly in this fashion, both on top and underneath, and rub well into the hand. From time to time, replenish with Diet Da Jiao, keeping the hand well saturated. As a general rule, use medicine for one third amount of time spent practicing. If you pound for 15 minutes, rub in liniment for 5 minutes. When you move up to gravel, you may need to adjust this ratio to 1 to 2, and with iron, 1 to 1. Find out what works best for you, but at the very least, use medicine for one third the amount of time spent practicing. For injury, spend extra time on that spot. Rub deeply, away from the extremities and toward the heart, and not just the spot that is injured, but all the way into the arm, well past the wrist. You will want to push all the fluids in the hand upward into the arm, diffusing the injury. Finish by shaking out the hands. Bouncing. Here the practitioner is bouncing up and down in his stance. The stance should be solid and unmoving. Here the practitioner leans forward with each strike. He is standing too far away from the bag. Stand at a comfortable distance from the bag and maintain an erect posture while striking. Crowding. Here the practitioner is crowding the bag. This cramps his technique such that internal energy does not flow properly into the striking hand. Stand at a comfortable distance. Your arm angles downward at 45 degrees when striking.
underlifting. Here the practitioner is using too little arm motion, limiting the flow of internal energy to the hand. The hand should be elevated above shoulder level before each strike. Overlifting. Here the practitioner is using too much arm motion. The hand should be raised no higher than the head. By raising the hand higher, one overly externalizes the exercise and loses the proper internal focus. Inattention. Here the practitioner is being inattentive. Keep your gaze forward on the bag or above it and keep your mind on what you are doing. Injuries often occur when one is distracted. Talking to someone during practice is an excellent way to incur an injury. Do not neglect the internal side of the exercise. Keep your mind focused. Rolling. Here the practitioner is hitting the bag at an angle that causes it to roll towards him. Always direct your force straight downward into the bag. If the bag has a persistent shift toward or away from you, you need to correct the angle of your strikes. Tension. Here the practitioner is overly tense, if not emotionally distraught. Perhaps he had a bad work day, or maybe he had a fight with his spouse. Or maybe he's thinking about what he'll do with his hands once they become lethal weapons. Whatever, his mind is unclear, his internal power unfocused, and his session wasted. Here is the practitioner doing everything correct. His mind is focused, his stance stable, his technique clean. A group of people can train together in iron hand. This has several benefits and at least one danger. First, a group will be more diligent in practicing regularly with proper technique for a longer period of time. Second, when people train together, they tend to push each other, making for a harder workout. Third, when people train together, they attain a greater unified focus. Note that this cannot hold if people talk. Group training must be a silent vigil. One danger of group training is that of overdoing it. If your conditioning is below that of the rest of the group, use common sense and stop before they do. If you injure your hands to a degree that they cannot recover in time for the next session, you have lost a step in your conditioning. Even if your conditioning is equal to the rest of the group, be aware that one's energy rises and falls from day to day, and there will be days when you should stop before the others. Become sensitive to your limits, and sensible in drawing the line. Here, Sifu Lam and a student have progressed to a faster tempo with increased force to their strikes. Often in group training, there will be a noticeable increase in speed and power as the session progresses. Be aware that there is an upper limit to this, which Sifu Lam and his student are approaching. If they go much faster, their technique will disintegrate. Good technique involves lifting the hand to head level and letting it drop 
doing so in a relaxed manner. This can only be done so fast. To go faster would mean jerking the hand forcefully upward and powering it downward, causing the internal aspect of the exercise to be lost. Before practice, always do a proper warm-up. No alcohol, no fullness or hunger pangs to disrupt your chi. During practice, stay calm and focus. Establish a comfortable rhythm. Conducive to a calm and focused mind, pick a secluded spot that is clean, quiet, peaceful, natural with fresh air. If outdoors, avoid strong breezes. If indoors, avoid drafts. After practice, Massage the hands thoroughly. Massage them even if you skip a lesson. Cool down naturally. Dry off with a towel, but otherwise let your body cool by itself. Avoid cool breezes. Avoid air conditioning. Avoid cold water on the face, hands, and body. Walk 200 steps before sitting or lying down to let the muscles relax. Wait 20 minutes before drinking cold liquids. Room temperature liquids are okay. If you smoke, wait 20 minutes before doing so. Wait 30 minutes before eating. Do not practice when upset, when sick, in thunders or stormy weather, the day after sexual activity. These conditions interfere with energy flow. In general, maintain a regular and consistent regimen. The first three months are the most important. If possible, practice three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening. If not, practice two times a day, morning and evening. Sunrise and sunset are the two best times. When setting up for iron hand training at home, strive for an atmosphere conducive to internal focus. A good first step is to unplug your phone. Make clear to family members that you cannot be disturbed. If possible, provide yourself with a natural view as this encourages the flow of chi. Do not set up in front of a TV. Practitioners in China time their sessions using incense sticks, but a clock or timer will do as well. At stage two, you can make the workout more continuous by stacking the warm-up mung bean bags on top of the gravel bags. After you've warmed up, you can toss the mung bean bag aside without breaking rhythm. Likewise, at stage three, stack mung bean bags on gravel on ball bearings. If you take this approach, make certain the bags are the same size and that they are stacked evenly. If the bottom bags are larger, they will impede the natural shifting of the bag on top. The bag being pounded must be able to shift naturally to your blows. 
Remember the importance of practicing every day unless you are sick. If you cannot be consistent in this, you are better off practicing every other day. If you miss some time, work your way back up. It should be faster the second time. Even if you don't practice on a day, still rub liniment into your hands. Sifu slap blocks successive punches. Again, the slap block of successive punches. Here, Sifu slap block two successive kicks. And again, we will show slapping the kicks. Here, Sifu grabs and slaps to the side of the head. Again, we show the grab and head slap. In this application, Sifu slaps the forearm and follows with backhand to face. Again, the forearm slap and backhand to face. Here, Sifu demonstrates a slap backhand combination. And again, the same movement. This application is an offensive variation of the previous one. Here we show it again. In this application, Sifu chops the attacking arm at the sensitive bicep. And once again, the chop to the bicep. Here's a double block chop down followed by a horizontal neck chop. Again, the same application. In this application, Sifu grabs and pokes with the fingers at the sensitive ribs. And again, the poke to the ribs. Here, Sifu blocks and pokes with the fingertips at the cheeks. And we show the same application once again. More diligent in practicing regularly with proper technique for a longer period of time. 
Second, when people train together, they tend to push each other, making for a harder workout. Third, when people train together, they attain a greater unified focus. Note that this cannot hold if people talk. Group training must be a silent vigil. One danger of group training is that of overdoing it. If your conditioning is below that of the rest of the group, use common sense and stop before they do. If you injure your hands to a degree that they cannot recover in time for the next session, you have lost a step in your conditioning. Even if your conditioning is equal to the rest of the group, be aware that one's energy rises and falls from day to day, and there will be days when you should stop before the others. Become sensitive to your limits and sensible in drawing the line. Here, Sifu Lam and a student have progressed to a faster tempo with increased force to their strikes. Often in group training, there will be a noticeable increase in speed and power as the session progresses. Be aware that there is an upper limit to this, which Sifu Lam and his student are approaching. If they go much faster, their technique will disintegrate. Good technique involves lifting the hand to head level and letting it drop, doing so in a relaxed manner. This can only be done so fast. To go faster would mean jerking the hand forcefully upward and powering it downward, causing the internal aspect of the exercise to be lost. Before practice, always do a proper warm-up. No alcohol, no fullness or hunger pangs to disrupt your chi. During practice, stay calm and focus. Establish a comfortable rhythm. Conducive to a calm and focused mind, pick a secluded spot that is clean, quiet, peaceful, natural, larger, they will impede the natural shifting of the bag on top. The bag being pounded must be able to shift naturally to your blows. Remember the importance of practicing every day unless you are sick. If you cannot be consistent in this, you are better off practicing every other day. If you miss some time, work your way back up. It should be faster the second time. Even if you don't practice on a day, still rub liniment into your hands. Sifu slap blocks successive punches. Again, the slap block of successive punches. Here, Sifu slap blocks two successive kicks. And again, we will show slapping the kicks. Here, Sifu grabs and slaps to the side of the head. Again, we show the grab and head slap.
In this application, Sifu slaps the forearm and follows with backhand to face. Again, the forearm slap and backhand to face. Here, Sifu demonstrates a slap backhand combination. And again, the same movement. The second stage conditions the tendons and bone structure of the hand. Gravel is often used, but soybeans, being lighter and softer, can be substituted for a more gradual step up from mung beans. Soybeans are larger and more irregular than mung beans, which causes a deeper penetration of the hands. Replace soybeans when they begin to break down. Gravel is the other choice for the second stage. A natural aquarium gravel is good. Don't get gravel that's been epoxy coated or painted, as this can be absorbed into the skin. The gravel should be smooth, without sharp edges, as this will cut through the bag and into the hands. Quarter inch pebbles are ideal. The gravel shown here is beginning to break down and should soon be replaced. The third stage conditions the bone marrow, the blood, and the chi. For this, use quarter-inch ball bearings of carbon steel, raw steel, or chrome steel. Avoid plating any kind of ball bearings as it will chip off and can puncture the hand. Chromium plating is particularly bad as it will powder and be absorbed through the hands, and chromium is not good for the body. Ball bearings do not typically break down. The stand should be sturdy with a flat surface. The height should allow the practitioner to stand in a relaxed horse stance and contact the bag with the arm sloping down at 45 degrees. For stage one training, center a single mung bean bag on the stand. For stage two, you can place a mung bean bag on top of a gravel bag as shown. This will be discussed later. Here, a stand is thrown together using cement blocks. The blocks are fitted tightly together, and for each successive layer, they face a different direction. Take the time to put together a good solid stand, as you will be using it two to three times a day for many months or years. A word about the bags. You can purchase them from Wing Lamb, or you can make them yourself. Making them requires some experimentation, as some materials will not hold up well to pounding. A thick cotton fiber is best. A group of people can train together in iron hand. This has several benefits and at least one danger. First, a group will be more diligent in practicing regularly with proper technique for a longer period of time. Second, when people train together, they tend to push each other, making for a harder workout. Third, when people train together, they attain a greater unified focus. Note that this cannot hold if people talk. Group training must be a silent vigil. One danger of group training is that of overdoing it. Your conditioning is below that of the rest of the group. Use common sense and stop before they do. If you injure your hands to a degree that they cannot recover in time for the next session, 
you have lost a step in your conditioning. Even if your conditioning is equal to the rest of the group, be aware that one's energy rises and falls from day to day, and there will be days when you should stop before the others. Become sensitive to your limits and sensible in drawing the line. Here, Sifu Lam and a student have progressed to a faster tempo with increased force to their strikes. Often in group training, there will be a noticeable increase in speed and power as the session progresses. Be aware that there is an upper limit to this, which Sifu Lam and his student are approaching. If they go much faster, their technique will disintegrate. Good technique involves lifting the hand to head level and letting it drop, doing so in a relaxed manner. This can only be done so fast. To go faster would mean jerking the hand forcefully upward and powering it downward, causing the internal aspect of the exercise to be lost. Before practice, always do a pro- You have lost a step in your conditioning. Even if your conditioning is equal to the rest of the group, be aware that one's energy rises and falls from day to day, and there will be days when you should stop before the others. Become sensitive to your limits and sensible in drawing the line. Here, Sifu Lam and a student have progressed to a faster tempo with increased force to their strikes. Often in group training, there will be a noticeable increase in speed and power as the session progresses. Be aware that there is an upper limit to this, which Sifu Lam and his student are approaching. If they go much faster, their technique will disintegrate. Good technique involves lifting the hand to head level and letting it drop, doing so in a relaxed manner. This can only be done so fast. To go faster would mean jerking the hand forcefully upward and powering it downward, causing the internal aspect of the exercise to be lost. For practice, always do a proper warm-up. No alcohol, no fullness or hunger pangs to disrupt your chi. During practice, stay calm and focus. Establish a comfortable rhythm. Conducive to a calm and focused mind, pick a secluded spot that is clean, quiet, peaceful, natural with fresh air. If outdoors, avoid strong breezes. If indoors, avoid drafts. After practice, Massage the hands thoroughly. Massage them even if you skip a lesson. Cool down naturally. Dry off with a towel, but otherwise let your body cool.
After thoroughly rubbing out the hands, focus on the fingers. Starting with the little finger, rub downward from the tip toward the hand. Rub deeply into each joint, always pushing toward the heart. Rub each finger thoroughly in this fashion, both on top and underneath, and rub well into the hand. From time to time, replenish with Deet Da Jiao, keeping the hand well saturated. As a general rule, use medicine for one-third amount of time spent practicing. If you pound for 15 minutes, rub in liniment for five minutes. When you move up to gravel, you may need to adjust this ratio to one to two, and with iron, one to one. Find out what works best for you, but at the very least, use medicine for one-third the amount of time spent practicing. For injury, spend extra time on that spot. Rub deeply, away from the extremities and toward the heart, and not just the spot that is injured, but all the way into the arm, well past the wrist. You will want to push all the fluids in the hand upward into the arm, diffusing the injury. Finish by shaking out the hands. Bouncing. Here the practitioner is bouncing up and down in his stance. The stance should be solid and unmoving. Here the practitioner leans forward with each strike. He is standing too far away from the bag. Stand at a comfortable distance from the bag and maintain an erect posture while striking. Crowding. Here the practitioner is crowding the bag. This cramps his technique such that here Sifu slap blocks two successive kicks. And again we will show slapping the kicks. Here, Sifu grabs and slaps to the side of the head. Again, we show the grab and head slap. In this application, Sifu slaps the forearm and follows with backhand to face. Again, the forearm slap and backhand to face. Here, Sifu demonstrates a slap backhand combination. And again, the same movement. This application is an offensive variation of the previous one. Here we show it again.
In this application, Sifu chops the attacking arm at the sensitive bicep. And once again, the chop to the bicep. Here's a double block chop down, followed by a horizontal neck chop. Again, the same application. Repeat this process one more time. This exercise loosens up the arm muscles and increases the energy flow into the arm and hand giving you better internal technique when pounding the bag. Do not skip the warm-ups. Your internal energy will not flow, making your technique sloppy and your hands more susceptible to injury. Stand relaxed with feet shoulder width apart. Alternately flick the hands out to the sides. Think in terms of flicking something off the tips of the fingers. Note the position and motion of the elbow. As with the arm swings, this hand flicking exercise loosens up the muscles in the wrist, hands, and elbows and increases energy flow for better internal technique. Hit the bag using a four-stroke pattern. The right hand uses the right side of the bag, the left hand the left. For each hit, raise the hand to head level and let it drop. Avoid powering it down. This is the palm strike. Back hand. Chop. And the poke. For the palm strike, cup the hand with fingers together, thumb against forefinger. The hand remains relaxed in this shape. Drop the hand with a slapping motion, focusing your energy into the hollow of the palm. Because the palm is a major conduit of the body's chi, the slapping palm strike has, with proper focus, tremendous penetrating force. This strike should be viewed as mostly internal. The backhand is a flicking, whip-like strike. The striking surface is from mid-hand to the ends of the fingers with the wrist well away from the bag. Do not merely hit with the back of the hand. The hand is dropped in a relaxed manner and the whipping motion occurs only as contact is made such that the ends of the fingers snap against the bag. This strike is mostly external. Its hard stinging power comes from wrist and finger joint motion alone. Chop with the side of the palm. Avoid hitting on the little finger. Bend the wrist so that the edge of the hand hits flush with the bag. Like the backhand, the chop is mostly external. A hard, abrupt chop.